I have veneers now. She got some big pearly whites. Big? Your teeth are bigger. They are? Like, Why are shaped. you doing your face like that? I'm sorry. I was about to burp. I deleted TikTok, which, by the way, I feel like a new person for doing that. It's completely off your phone. It's great, but I shouldn't probably advertise that. That we're is TikTokers. Our... <laughs> That's her job. I've seen article after article about how any amount of alcohol is bad for you. I'm doing dry January. I'm not drinking at all for I'm the month of January. I'm doing wet January. Abby has started to drink <laughs> in January. It's really scary when the doctor tells you your baby has RSV. When your kid's hurting, that hurts you so much more mm -hmm. than it's probably bothering them, honestly. What's, What's up, dudes? dudes? And welcome back to the Unplanned Podcast. Are you tired? I don't know what's wrong with me. You just yawn. I know. I'm always tired. And today was the day that you have to sleep in, which, how how was that? How did it feel? It's never as restful as you think it is. <laughs> it's funny. The one day, okay, so like we alternate days that we get up with our boys. And today I got lucky because the boys slept in until 745, which was. No, they did well, not. No, Augie woke up at 5 a.m. And then you fed him. And then I put him back to bed. What did it take him? 20 minutes? 25 minutes? 525 yeah, you probably I mean, went back to quick. yeah 525 went back to sleep and then yeah then our oldest woke up at 745 so i got some good sleep today it always happens that way doesn't it feel like that like do I, you agree I know, how you, I know how you feel yeah you feel like you get gypped like on on your on the days that I feel like I you want gypped. them to sleep in they don't sleep in and the days that uh you don't care, then they it's sleep in. It's a good in. setup though, but the, just the fault in it is that I have to feed the baby. So then, yeah. like at when I woke up, I was like, he's already late for eating, so I need to get up. It would be way easier to divide the workload evenly between the kids if we just bottle fed yeah. only. It would be so much easier. But I know that breastfeeding is really important to you. By the way, when are you going to give that up, I guess? How long do you I think you're going to do it? Honestly, like to be completely honest, I don't think our baby loves breastfeeding that much. So I don't know. It might be shorter than with our first, but I also know that breastfeeding got so much easier once solids were introduced with our first. That was just our experience. So maybe once he starts solids, he's literally ready to start solids now. If he takes to solids really well, then I could continue to nurse until he's one. And then... Yeah, that would we'll be see. that would be cool. Only problem though is when you nurse through one, then I think you're more locked down. I feel like it's Well, alone. then I become more relaxed with it though because I'm like, I don't... Like I could pump or I could, yeah. you know, it just becomes like a lot more relaxing. What's nice. I think you mentally, didn't you like stop physically breastfeeding Griffin like a couple months before he was one, but you had so much supply just built like up in the freezer. So, yeah. Yeah. Like all the supply you had in the freezer that was able to last him till he was one. Yeah. I will tell you, I feel like it is talked about, but I still was shocked by it when we had babies was the mental load of breastfeeding. It's just, mm -hmm. it's a lot because you're the sole feeder and then when you're away from the baby you still have to think about pumping and then do you have enough milk storage to get you through till the end or how's the milk going to stay cold and how can like it's just it's so surprising because I know it probably sounds like to people that haven't gone through it like I feel like some people are like oh yeah that's a lot but like to actually go through it is a lot yeah <laughs> but you know we do it for our babies and I love him and I don't want to complain because I know it's just a short amount of time and I'm really thankful but at the same time, it is really difficult. Yeah. I had a question for you and I literally completely forgot it. My brain Also, was can I give a side note? What? If you're watching on YouTube and I'm not like turning to face Matt very much. Oh my gosh. I tweaked my neck. So Abby tweaked her neck. <laughs> she can't. This this happens like a couple times a year. Yeah. yeah. you Abby cannot move her neck to the left. So it's like stuck in place. In the past, or the you've, right, really. you've gone to the chiropractor before to help fix it. I know that's kind of controversial with if the chiropractor is good or not for fixing things like that. I think it's good. Um, but it's worked for you in the past. So that's why I, I think just, it's good. Aren't there horror stories of people like, getting paralyzed and stuff? Like they, they paralyzed? literally... Pa paralyzed? said that really weird. Paralyzed? <laughs> Wait, that's funny. I feel like that's from a Disney movie or something. Paralyzed? Paralyzed. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um... I don't know. I've had a great experience, so I believe in them. But I will say, what was I going to say? It doesn't happen a couple times a year. I haven't had this happen in, like <laughs> since I had babies. It's so funny, too. Your head just like frozen, and you try, you turn, and your whole body moves. And the most frustrating Rather than turning thing. your head, your whole entire body has to move. Like You like shift your feet. It's yeah. hilarious. I don't even realize I'm doing it. Wait, but, yeah, like, I'm the most How are you looking thing? at me right now? I guess your body's moved towards well, me. It's more, I, I'm more stuck this way than this way. That's anyway, crazy. Um, 
it does what was i saying oh the frustrating thing is i didn't literally do anything like it just mm-hmm. like as i was standing there holding our baby i was like oh 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 like i felt it like i think it's a pinched nerve i really don't know what that even means but it just sent it's painful and it's more so just annoying that sucks i've had that happen to me once before really really, really bad on a cruise and i got oh, a deep yeah. tissue massage to try to fix the pinch nerve or whatever and let me tell you the deep tissue massage that, was that I had your mistake. was the most painful thing I've ever experienced <laughs> in my life. I don't know why people get massages. That like I've never gotten a massage since. It was horrible. This lady was like basically jumping up and down on my back. Why do I feel like I would like that? Like just, I like a very firm massage. It was very aggressive. She was a little bitty woman and she was going to work on my back. Stuff was popping that I didn't know could pop. Yeah, it I was like painful. That. I like I that. I thought my arms were going to like rip off. She was like boom, But boom, afterwards boom, did like, you feel oh. really good? No, I felt horrible. <laughs> I felt like, okay, so you know if you like go way too hard in the gym and then your whole body is sore for a week and you, yeah. and you can hardly move, that's what happened to me. Okay, well, it was maybe, like that. maybe I that felt was like it worked more intense out. than what I've had. I probably burned some calories from how aggressive that thing was. I told, I think when you have a pinched nerve, you're supposed to do gentle massages, Matt. That's why I signed up for a massage literally right after we filmed but this. But I told you, I was like, I don't think the massage is going to do jack squat. I think you should just go to a chiropractor because that's actually going to fix it. I can't find a chiropractor in the matter of 24 hours, but I can find a massage. That's true. Maybe we should talk around to our friends and, and see if anybody... I got a gift card from your mom for Christmas. That's very nice. So that's nice might as well mom. give it a shot. Because when I Googled it, it literally did say gentle massages. So I was like, okay. And I put my my firmness, I put gentle. I hope it fixes it. I really don't think it's going to fix your neck though. Okay. <laughs> I took a bath last night and that alone made it feel better. It did? It didn't fix it. It just felt better in the moment. Oh, you should do. You should take more baths. Yeah. You should like, do that. Because you're supposed to do hot and cold. I've been researching this. They said to take over-the-counter like pain medicines. That actually did not help me. Yeah. I just feel like ibuprofen and acetaminophen and stuff like that don't work on me in general. No, it's really only My Excedrin. My body doesn't tolerate it. Like when you get a migraine, the only thing that works for your migraine is Excedrin. That yeah. is it. Because you took, you just had a migraine a couple I days ago. I probably should get a prescription for migraines. Yeah. That would be, that would be good. But Excedrin works though we should have a doctor on this podcast because i feel like we're saying a lot of things and that's true and uh, i feel like it's not based in no, any I've actually, actual we had we had somebody reach out that was like a, a marriage therapist and i thought it'd be so cool to have them on oh comment down below if you want to see us have live marriage <laughs> that sounds really no, healthy no 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 not for us <laughs> like just to talk about oh marriage therapy in for marriage in general but i think it'd be fun to have expert people on for to sure. talk about things whether yeah. it's an expert marriage therapist maybe somebody uh who talks about money because i think marriage and finances really go hand in hand dave ramsey would be a really fun guest we're shooting our um, shot right now dave we're getting a little sidetracked <laughs> I wanted to know. Oh, wait, no, I want to uh, oh, I want to elaborate on that. I think what? it's really important that we have experts on here. I do feel like people look to social media to find answers for things. I do it myself. Yeah. And there's no credibility necessarily. <laughs> like there's very credible people online, but there's no like expectation of credibility when it comes to online posting. So like people could look to us and be like, oh, that's how it's supposed to be. Like if you have back pain, you got to go take a bath yeah and like there's no actual like i'm just a random person that did google so to your point i agree with you thank you but what question were you gonna ask me i wanted to like switch gears to the fact that our whole family is currently sick i think we're getting over it you're you're feeling a lot better i'm Mm -hmm. better it's been rough the holidays wrecked us you know to say the least it was inevitable honestly yeah like i it's hard because you see all these things that kind of make like in turn it kind of made me feel really guilty when our kids got sick because i was like man i should have been the one to prevent this i should have mm-hmm. just like i thought of all the things i should have done differently and then i just realized i cannot keep our kids in a bubble i can do everything in my power that's reasonable to make them be able to be in a social mm-hmm. atmosphere and protect them and because I just don't, it's not worth saying like, oh, we can't see our family or we can't travel to see them or it's exactly. not worth that. And I mean, because they're healthy kids. Now, that would probably be different if they had something else yeah. going on health wise. But um, yeah, we're making it through. Uh, I felt guilty for a little bit that it happened. But then I also know that it's not in my control. Well, the thing is, I like, didn't choose for them to get sick. It's not like we're traveling and seeing family when we have a one month old or a, a baby that's a couple weeks old like we, we have a baby that's nearly five months old 
we have a one and a half year old. So they're they're past the time of yeah. where it's like scary if they get sick. This portion of today's episode is sponsored by Caraway Home. Nothing will make you more excited to cook more meals at home in 2024, which I'm sure that's a lot of people's resolution is yeah. to cook more meals at home. I know that's always the goal of ours. Nothing will make you more excited, I swear, than nice kitchenware. Yes, the Caraway Home kitchenware, you guys, I use it every single morning when I cook my son breakfast. It is the best. It's it, great. Eggs don't get stuck on the pan. No. Like I, I put a tiny bit of butter down and it just comes right off. It has ceramics naturally slick surface, means minimal oil or butter for slide off the pan eggs and easy cleaning. Nothing's more frustrating when you have a pan that stuff won't come off of. Like oh when my gosh. It is infuriating. It drives and me crazy. It's just... I feel I can sleep better at night knowing that Caraway Homes got me covered because I it's so nice. Truthfully. Like you just turn the pan upside down, boom, eggs fall right off. There's no, like no residue left. Yes. And it's the best. What's good is that it's also non-toxic because a lot of like pans that do that exact same yeah. thing, what do they call that? Non-stick. It has a lot of toxic stuff in it, but Caraway products are made without any toxic materials like PFAS, PTFE, PFA, PFOA, or other hard to pronounce chemicals. Clearly, I can't get it out there. And if you can't pronounce it, then you probably don't want it in your cooking. You probably, do, yeah, don't want to eat food <laughs> off of that. I also love how aesthetic they are. They yes. look so freaking cute. Okay, They are beautiful. We our, have the like sage green kind with the nice. gold accent. I almost want to just like show it off in our kitchen because it just looks so aesthetic. I can't tell you how much I love Caraway Homes cookware. You will not be disappointed by them. What's great is that you can visit carawayhome.com slash unplanned to take advantage of this limited time offer for 10% off your next purchase. Yay. This deal is exclusive for our listeners. So visit carawayhome.com slash unplanned or use code unplanned at checkout. Caraway non-toxic cookware cookware made modern thank you caraway homes now back to the episode and sure it's still scary if yeah. your you know four month almost five month old get sick but at the same time like you can't just not live your life well, you can't just stay home all the time and skip family christmas skip new year's well, not see your family when we went to montana they literally stayed in the house the entire time we were there like it's not no, like yeah, they're they out and about exactly our boys didn't leave the house yeah and that was when they actually got sick yeah, which was so, which was really sad and it's just it's unexplainable like why these things happen but thank goodness it never got serious and for us, it especially wasn't serious, but for it was scary for the baby, but he was just fine. Yeah. He was always... Well, it's really scary when the doctor tells you your baby has RSV and all over the news, it's like, RSV is, is big this year and... I, you know, you hear about babies even die of RSV. So it's like, it's really, really scary when you take your baby to the doctor and you're told that. Mm -hmm. um, what was that like? How, how did you how did you feel when the doctor told you that our four I month mean, old got RSV? I could RSV? see him and I could see that he was doing all right. Yeah. So it would have probably been more alarming if he was having difficulty breathing or anything like that. Like um, they were checking his oxygen. It was like 100 and it was, then it was 98 like his he was doing all right so i think it would have been more scary if i could mm -hmm. see him and be like okay this isn't good but just the words rsv were scary because i was hospitalized with it as a baby yeah and um i know that you were hospitalized for a similar illness oh my gosh yeah we were both hospitalized as babies for illnesses yeah i think i got a shot in my head or something my parents told me that i had like shots i had to get a some... spinal tap wow as a tiny infant that's yeah. really sad and it, i mean that's a painful thing gosh. so that was sad for my parents and yeah, I, I think that this is just part of parenthood that sucks. Because, yeah. like, when your kid's hurting, that hurts you so much more mm -hmm. than it's probably bothering them, honestly, just to watch them go through it. But he really wasn't hurting. That's the thing. Like, he was smiling at the doctor's office when he was give, oh, been getting yeah. his diagnosis. Like, he was so happy that that, like, gave me assurance as a mom. Like, everything's going to be okay. Yeah. He's all right. He's not even really understanding that he's uncomfortable. Like, yeah. he was smiling and laughing. Yeah, I first started noticing symptoms our first day of vacation with Abby's family. Augie was coughing and sneezing, and you could see, like, snot coming out of his nose. Which, by the way, like, our, our toddler, I feel like he's always sick. He always has a runny nose. He's always coughing. Yeah. So I'm like, for sure, he's our, to that our toddler system. for sure got our new our yeah he did four month old sick that like i have no, no doubt they, in my mind he did in between like coughs and sneezes he's like laughing and smiling at yeah. me so that made me feel really good but i i totally know how you feel because it it was scary like it it scared me when i noticed like when i when i hold doggy and i could feel the congestion in his chest and you can feel the rattling it's really scary and i kept thinking i was 
you know, I, I wanted to take him to the doctor the first day that I noticed symptoms, but then some of our family members were like, well, I mean, this stuff happens. Like, I don't think you need to take him in right now. It, and the thing is, is it does. Yeah. It does happen. And so it's hard to know when to take them in. And the thing about RSV, I feel like a lot of times we go with fever as like a reason to know that it's time to take them in. But mm-hmm. RSV, they don't get a fever usually. No, that was the other thing. He didn't have a fever so, at all. He had no temperature. So with no temperature, I thought, okay, maybe this is just, you know, a little cold. And You know, it's better safe than sorry, though. And I'm glad yeah. we did take him in. It was never very yeah. serious, but um, I'm glad that... We had eyes on it, yeah. and it, it's weird that they couldn't even do anything though. Yeah. Like he has an ear infection, and so they could give him some medicine for that, but for the actual RSV, they couldn't do anything. I mean, they gave him a breathing treatment, and I actually think that it helped. Even though the doctor literally told me I was like, or she told me she said, "I don't think this is gonna do anything, but we're gonna try." And I was like, okay. (laughs) It actually did help loosen up his congestion. So there's little things that they can do. Obviously, if it's very serious, then they they will hospitalize them and put them on like assisted oxygen. Yeah. But um, that was never necessary or even close to being necessary. So we're really, really thankful for that. So anyone, if you have sick babies right now, I feel like everyone has sick children right now because it's so many things are going around. Yeah. Um, I feel for you. I've known a lot of people, a lot of people, like friends, um, People that even work for us have been sick. So, yeah, I mean, it's there's a lot of stuff going around, especially like January just seems like the time of year that it is. Everyone. January is the worst sick. month of the year. I, I honestly yeah. will stand by that. It's funny <laughs> when our whole entire family got sick right away, like just as a joke, I was like, I blame my brother because because three years ago when we got COVID, it was from my brother. <laughs> at and Christmas he got time. sick last Christmas, too. Yeah. And this Christmas. Yeah. My brother's always sick during the holidays. So it's always like, the college kids. We need to freaking keep my kids away from my brother because he's going to get us, us all sick. No, um, no, no. Not his fault. Can you breathe out your nose? Because I still can't really breathe out my nose. I have One nostril's no. clear one, and the other one's not. I have a big nose, so I can breathe great through it. There's lots this, of space. This one's completely clogged up. You always have some. My, my, I can, like, I literally have to tape my mouth shut so that I can't breathe out my nose at night. Matt, that's bad because if your nose is clogged, you're going to just suffocate yourself in the night i that well sometimes i have to take the tape off because i'm like i literally can't breathe oh <laughs> i can't breathe out my nose guys matt literally tapes his mouth closed every single night when it's we go to weird bed, and then i know he kisses it's, me with his taped up lips and it's it feels really, weird. really creepy and especially when i put like vaseline on my face you know just to just to try to keep my skin not from in a dry. normal way I, i'll load up my hands with vaseline You're lubed up i'll put like, i'll put tape on my mouth and i'm like good night honey give you a kiss it's it's pretty uh it's sexy. pretty funny it's pretty sexy it's, it's really <laughs> the word for it oh gosh <laughs> yeah i truly think january is the longest month of the year it's even cold here in arizona like i forget that it gets cold here it's 40 degrees outside it's 40 degrees outside right now what the heck we live in arizona where it's supposed to be hot and it's not sunny 40 it literally it i will show you right now i didn't I was going to take the kids outside for a walk this morning, and it was way too cold, so I didn't. Probably has got a little bit warmer. Okay, now it's 48. Oh, wow, 48 degrees. That is really cold. I don't want to go outside when it's 48. That's good, though, because now we know that it's winter time. Unless it's snowing. If it's snowing and it's below freezing, I don't care. Like, that completely changes everything, and that's why we should move to Utah. Okay. <laughs> okay, Matt. Today's episode is sponsored by Dreamland Baby. You guys, this is probably one of our favorite products ever. Our kids have been using it for like the entirety of their lives. It is on the top, top five list of best products. And it helps our kids sleep so much better at night. Exactly. Nothing's more infuriating than like when you're trying to get sleep as a parent and then your baby can't sleep and then you can't sleep and then everyone's upset. But like, what if there's a solution to helping your baby sleep better at night and then you also sleep better at night? Hello? dreamland baby (laughs) truthfully you guys like if we're out and about and our son has to take a nap we always make sure we bring it like that's how it's not even just like an at-home thing it's like whenever he takes a nap he needs that whenever we're on a plane he needs that both of our boys because they have one that has a swaddle and they have another one that's for like toddlers and And yeah they are incredible the gently weighted sleep sacks actually hold up really well in the wash every once in a while but we'll have like a little accident you know in the sleep sacks and you just throw them in the washing machine yeah quite often i mean we have a, a one and a half year old and a Five month old. So it, poop and spit up. It just yeah. is a common thing. But you just throw it in the washing machine, 
like good as new. It's it's awesome. They have gotten so much use in our house and they will continue to get use. They are truly the best. And they have great two-way zippers. It's great for nighttime diaper changes. It has basically, if you don't know, it's gently weighted on the top. So your babies can still move around. They can stand up even, roll around. But it's just enough to kind of make them feel like they're getting a nice cozy hug all night. And yep. it like calms them down. It's called Cover Calm Technology and it's evenly distributed weight from shoulders to toes, which is exclusive to the Dreamland baby products. You cannot give a better gift to a new parent than the gift of extra sleep. Get it for your friends. Get it, get or, it. <laughs> or if you're about to have a baby, put it on your registry. Like people will get it for you. Like people love you and they and they will get that for you because they care about you. It's an investment, but, but it is truly the best investment you can make, honestly. Go to dreamlandbabyco.com and enter our code unplanned all caps at checkout to receive 20 percent off site-wide plus free shipping this offer is for new and existing customers thank you dreamland baby and now back to the episode by the way your smile looks beautiful can i see those pearly whites wow show the camera smile to the camera holy crap they look so good i feel like i can elaborate on this decision more on the podcast than i can like on instagram or anything like that okay but it was something which, by the so, way, so yeah, let's just uh, say I have veneers now. Abby, yeah, Abby got veneers. She got some big pearly whites. <laughs> wow. Big. No, your teeth are bigger. They are. Like, they've Why been shaped. Why are you doing your face like that? I'm sorry. I was about to burp, it's and I was really like trying to. Weird. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> I'm really. I apologize. <laughs> That was I'm also holding like, a burp and he was scaring me. And I also can't breathe out my nose, so it's like it's really Why are those weird. two connected? I don't know why it's connected, but it was throwing <laughs> okay, me off. Okay, anyway, um, I was overthinking the heck out of this decision because, um, I mean, I just want to be very, very mindful about any decision I make that is a permanent change on my body. And I think that's a good thing in general to have. And so I thought about it for years, actually. And... In my mind, I was putting it in the same box as plastic surgery, which I'm not totally against. I'm definitely not against it in general, but I just didn't know about my opinions on it for me personally. And then I was like, wait, I don't think teeth should be in the same category as plastic surgery. And when I made that distinction, it was a no brainer for me that this was something I wanted to move forward with. Yeah, I just want to be really mindful about it because it's a huge decision um, for a lot of reasons, um, the cost of veneers is very high. And you kept asking me about it. Like you wanted me to make the decision for you. And I was like, whoa, this is not my decision to make. This is your decision. But then you kept asking me and asking me. And I was like, are you asking me because you're worried about what people might think if you get veneers? Like, was, was that the reason that you were so interested in what I thought? That was honestly probably a big part of it. Cause you didn't want it to be perceived in the wrong way. Yeah. Like you didn't want people to think, oh, now she's. She thinks she's better than everyone or no, no, thinking, no, not that. I don't think that they would think that, but or just that, or just like living trying to adhere to an unobtainable standard. beauty st- standard. Yeah. And so that worried you because you don't want to like I'm sure it's the same with boob jobs. Like I'm sure some women are hesitant to get those even if they really want it because they don't want to keep pushing this. Yeah, this beauty standard that isn't like natural essentially yeah. right because yeah. to have perfect teeth and to have the perfect boobs and the perfect butt like people get I work just think done it's a slippery slope like yeah it, um you're right getting any kind of work done in general it's not that i'm against it i think that i'm more for like for me personally evaluating the reasons behind it like is this i don't know i don't know if i have the right words to say about my view on it but well, i think okay i think it's about confidence yes and Look, well, I think, can I say I think you're confident. I think it's better if your confidence can come from non-physical changes in yourself. But I will tell you, like when I had braces in high school, I was so much more confident once I got my braces off. I just felt better. I, I felt like a new person. I was happy that I had straight teeth and I was insecure in the way that my teeth looked before. It was really nice to have that done. Um, and we have a friend who, for the same reasons, got veneers unlike you and our friend my teeth were not an insecurity of mine um i knew they weren't perfect i never had any orthodontic work done i never had braces retainer anything um it was never anything like i knew they weren't perfect but i wasn't even close to insecure about it like i was like oh they're just my teeth but what i saw when i saw what it could look like i have always admired 
people with great teeth like you I always tell you like you have amazing teeth I love your <laughs> teeth and so when I saw that I could have teeth like that I was like wow that that would be really cool and it's crazy that something I've learned through this experience is that I didn't have to be insecure about it for it to build my confidence and now I just want to talk more I want to smile more I want to show off my teeth and um it's, it's just really cool what it can do. Um, and I think for a lot of people, it could really change their life doing something like this. And basically, I just didn't want to be out of touch because I know that this was, this is a, veneers are pricey. And I just didn't want to be like thinking that this is a decision I could make all willy nilly, you mm -hmm. know? And I yeah. literally did just say willy nilly. You did just say that. Yeah. But, I think that's a cool word. Um, I think that, I was very thoughtful about the process and I really am very happy with how it turns out. And ultimately it is a personal decision, but because we have a lot of eyes on us, I wanted to be additionally more yeah. thoughtful about it. So that was my major hesitation too. And you were beautiful before, but it's like, it's the same you, but then even elevated. Thank so you. That I like, I think um, I like the way that you look, but I, but I also want to emphasize the fact that this was like a decision that you made for yourself and it wasn't it wasn't something that i i don't know i just think that's like no you said the whole time you're like you just decide what you want to do i like you i like your smile either way yeah. <laughs> like you weren't pressuring me at all and i think that's i wanted you to have like a strong opinion that's why i kept asking you i wanted you to have a strong opinion because i was so on the fence about it yeah. but i will say um i went to smiles of chandler with dr heaton and he gave me so much assurance through the whole process because my first of all my teeth I would say look very natural they look like my own teeth just enhanced in a slight way that makes a large overall difference on my smile um just like slightly elongating some and reshaping another just it, it made such a huge difference but the other thing that's really cool about Dr. Heaton's veneers that he does is that he does no prep or nearly no prep veneers meaning that your teeth are not getting shaved down to those terrifying nubs that I think we've all seen pictures of like people, mm -hmm. I don't know I feel like people go to like Turkey or other countries and get like more affordable veneers done and their teeth are like wrecked um my natural teeth are completely intact underneath these super 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 thin ceramic veneers so or is it porcelain i think it's porcelain but yeah they just go on top of abby's teeth and with no prep veneers they don't have to shave your teeth down at all now abby did have to have her teeth shaved down very minimally not shaved um, down just reshaped oh, on reshaped. the sides yeah so she can take off the mirrors today and her teeth would look completely normal it would be back to i can't take them off oh yeah they are permanent you would but have to, they can okay. be removed and i can go back to my natural they like teeth. Got, they get cemented on there yeah like it's it's literally cement yeah these and, things aren't going anywhere and it was hilarious because for two weeks abby had on these temps temporary veneers to make sure that it was the decision she wanted to go through and with temporary veneers she could only eat soft food so all through christmas and new year's and like the, all the holidays or actually no not new year's but just through christmas time abby could only eat mac and cheese she could only eat protein like soup, shakes protein soup. shakes um and so that was i'm surprised you did that during the holidays because that sucked like you couldn't have pie you couldn't have good desserts yeah so that, really I think that, that uh having the temps really solidified my decision because even before like when i first had the temps on i was like oh i really like them but i don't know it's a big difference but then after i had them on for that amount of time i was like there is no way i would choose to go back to what my teeth looked like before because i just in that two-week span I was so happy to like take pictures and I've always been hesitant or not hesitant about taking pictures. Something I've done since like honestly high school I feel like I don't know what made me make this decision back then but like whenever people take a picture they're like do you want to check it and see if you like it? I'm always like no because I don't want to sit there and just like study and analyze myself. I just want to capture how I looked in that moment and I don't I don't know people I think Otherwise, you end up retaking pictures. Anyway, that was just a decision I made in high school. And now I'm like, I love every single picture. <laughs> like, I just, I don't know. That's My sweet. teeth are just making me feel like a lot more confident. And Sorry. I'm excited about 2024. New year, new smile. Yeah, I, I love this. How, what would you say about the process of it all? How, how was it? Was it more than you expected? Was it less than what you expected? You know, I really didn't know a lot about the process going in. 
Um, that's how I kind of go into a lot of things. Mm-hmm. I like to just go in blindly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's probably bad advice, but for me, I'm like, ah, let's that, just figure it out as we that's go. That's true. That's literally us with everything moving. Yeah. We just kind of send it like, and just move. I like doing it that way. It is kind of fun to live life on the edge like yeah. that, isn't it? Where you just yeah. don't know. You don't know what you don't know. And, and that way, all the things that could go wrong, you, you're not aware of them. Right. And so with like birth you're in a hospital so you're like hey somebody here knows what to do yeah. i'm th- i'm hope i'm hoping i don't so, really think that's a great way to go about things probably but it not, does but that's um, the way that we help do it me go through with like i'm so calm with yeah. things like i literally they <laughs> should i say this what so they actually for the process of veneers um you go in basically there's two major days that you go in two weeks apart or four weeks apart it can kind of range yeah. out of range um but they actually prescribe you an uh, like a anti-anxiety medicine because people get so nervous at the dentist yes it, did you just too i didn't it was my leg hear that it that's was my, not what it, it was like my earlier. leg on the couch i did not fart i think you did i did not too i promise you i did not i know you're if i did like- i would totally admit to it because that would be hilarious if i accidentally farted on the podcast i would claim it have you ever farted on the podcast i don't think i have have you i feel like you probably have when honestly. you're pregnant especially yeah, i feel like you might have let one slip every time yeah do we have that on <laughs> recording i don't even know oh, i'm sure we do yours are silent but deadly too <laughs> yeah, like yeah. i just i'll be in bed and i'm just laying there i think it's because of the underwear and i'll smell I something oh my gosh <laughs> yes the underwear it like it's like a little string that just like chops the fart in half Not a string. and you That's can't even different. smell it That's well you wear different. a thong so it's gonna be like okay. a string but it, and then i'll be laying there and then the, the smell will just come right to my nose all, That's all of a pleasant. sudden i love that yes That's and what's funny is you end up crop dusting me and and other people and you dutch oven me all the time on our bed like it'll it'll just like sit underneath the covers and then make its way up to my face That's and it's just what four and a half years of marriage will do to you folks <laughs> <laughs> you just start letting them loose they smell so bad but i think it's funny i think it's hilarious i don't like it i don't like i'm not like that i'm when not you, when you gas, fart it's funny i'm not a gas queen but sometimes it just happens okay it's sad you know what's sad about marriage is I, I don't know why i thought we were closer than this but now you've gotten to the point where you shut the door when you're pooping we can't even talk i just want to have a conversation with you i, still I would talk love to, to you. i would love to just converse while you're on the toilet but it's why like oh no that? i have to have the door shut it's like i literally have seen you birth our children i've seen so much yeah, like you've been there. you can poop and talk to me at the same time i do but i just decide that i want to have a little privacy during that time you know some couples don't even and fart in front, in front of each other yeah like let's move towards that that's pretty a weird too comfortable i think that's here. a little weird like you're you're with the person that knows you better than anybody else in the world and you can't even fart in front of them maybe they just want to maintain some sexiness around i don't it. know i mean i think that is sexy it's like you know me more than anybody so i really? feel i feel comfortable wow now that i know that gas. i'm just gonna eat beans every night i know you should. You should. <laughs> what was I talking about? Oh, they prescribe anxiety medicine. Anti-anxiety. I don't know. Basically, a, a medicine that's supposed to just keep you really calm. And I took it the first time I went. And oh. um, I think it's great for the people that need it. But I just realized I probably didn't need that. And it just made me really sleepy with... Which, having two babies, I was like, I don't need to be any more sleepy in my life. And I also wanted to drive a vehicle after the appointment. So yeah. the second time, I didn't take it, and I felt the exact same. And I think that's because, like, it's just not a scary process. This portion of the episode is sponsored by Lumi. Let's start off 2024 fresh, you guys. I, I honestly, I'm not even slightly ashamed to admit it. I'm a sweater. Yeah, me too. I'm literally sweating right now. Lumi. I've been moving around. And I'm sweating through my clothes. Can I ask, did you put deodorant on this morning? I actually did put on deodorant. Okay, good. I did, that makes it sound like I never wear deodorant. I think you could be a little bit more on top of that. Sometimes. Every once in a while, you know, I'll I'll skip every once in a while. Okay, well, never <laughs> skip a day with Lumi. Lumi deodorant has you covered from your pits to your privates to your feet. Yes. Wow. Really? That's very convenient. Actually. Lumi is a game-changing whole body deodorant designed by an OBGYN to work not only on pits, but also on feet privates and everywhere else we get odor what's really cool about lumi is that it's formulated and powered by mandolin acid matt do you know what mandolin acid is i do not it basically stops odor before it starts so it's like okay. a it's like a pre-odorant that's nice so, so you kind of taking... get on top of the stink yeah preventative measures for your sweat exactly 
Exactly. It's clinically proven to control odor better than a shower or with soap alone. 12 hours after a shower, the average person has an odor level of 6 out of 10. Yikes. I would say you err more on the side of 10. Ouch. With Lumi, the average odor level is a 0 out of 10. Thank you, Lumi. Lumi's starter pack is honestly perfect for if you haven't used any of their products yet. It gets you a little bit of everything. It's perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like a mini body wash and deodorant wipes, which those are great, by the way. I keep those in my car after the gym. Just do a little wipey wipe and it's like your fresh is fresh is fresh and free shipping as a special offer for listeners new customers get five dollars off a lumi starter pack with code unplanned at lumideodorant.com that equates to over 40 percent off your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and use code unplanned that's a good deal thank you lumi now back to the episode it's funny i don't know what it is but every time you get on drugs whether it's getting your wisdom it, teeth removed, a lot. it really hits you hard like i felt like i was gonna say weird things and i couldn't help it yeah and we so, hung out with friends afterwards, and I was like, I don't try. Like, they were saying something serious, and I was about to laugh. Like, I'm like, were, I can't. You were oddly calm. It was crazy how calm it made you, Abby, because in the car, just for a little bit, our baby was crying in the back seat, and it and you were very calm through it. And I was like, what? I was like, wow, this is actually kind of nice. Like, you you were very relaxed <laughs> in the situation. Not chrome when no, our baby cries in usually, the car. Usually, you take it out on me. Usually, usually, and I'm like, so in, in the car, you were just so calm through that whole situation, and it was it was interesting to see what that was like. I don't want to do it again. But then, yeah, you you hate medicine, so I. I don't blame you for yeah. wanting to. And I didn't need it because it was just a very, like, honestly minimal process because they're not shaping your teeth down or shaving your teeth down to nubs. Like, they're just, it's very minimal. And then they glue them on. It's crazy. Can I just say how I think you're so tough for really? the things that you do? Yeah. Thank you. Because you're you're over here you, you go get it to get the veneers on which because they're putting cement on your teeth and putting these you know pieces of porcelain on your teeth and and shaping them and all that wow i really need to take some medicine my like nose is so clogged but you're going through all this process and the fact that you didn't take the medicine <laughs> the second time and you just sent it i honestly think i don't experience pain in the same level as most people do you don't I, think so i don't think i do i don't think it's because i'm like mentally tough because i know i'm mentally not I tough no, i think I, physically i don't feel as much pain as other people no i think you're mentally really tough no I, i'm I, not no i, I think <laughs> I you mentally no, fragile. Well, it's, it's different i think like because you know how like in mario kart when you're picking out your car you have you know the strengths and the weaknesses of mm-hmm. every single car and it has like speed and traction and like all the different things i think if if we're looking at you as like a Mario Kart okay. car, okay, I would prefer you can, to be the bullet you can, bike. But yeah, the bullet bike is pretty fire. But I think you, as far as like taking pain and like physically hard things, I think you're incredibly strong. Oh, but yeah. But then I think as far as more like emotional things that aren't yeah. like pain related, that's like a one I think bar. that's where you cry, like you break, and that's like why we've we've had like half our podcast episodes where you cry because yeah. I think you're very emotional. No, and like, people actually I think, think I'm like clinically depressed. No, you're not. No, I'm you're okay. Not. I just cry a lot. Abby just cries a lot, and I think no. Okay, wait, no, because that I actually think is a it, symptom of depression. I wear my emotions at 100 percent external, and I think it's because you're so empathetic. Thank you. I think you're very empathetic. I I think so. that I think that I am, and I appreciate you saying that. But I also think that it's a strength and a weakness. Yeah, I mean, I think everything can be like that, though. Yeah, I trust me, I'm doing a lot better. I feel like I've cried a lot less these being four months postpartum. Yeah. The tears have gotten way less. Yeah, and I think we're finally out of the dark stages. We're out of the dark place. Can we just Woo! give it up? We're out of the dark place. Not everyone we gets made in it a out. dark place after having a baby, but I feel like we know ourselves now we get in a dark place after a baby. We do, we do. And it feels good to be on the other side. Ah, uh, yes. I feel... So I feel like we can do anything. I feel like I know. we're our marriage is good. We're happy. We love each other. We've been going on dates. It's been so fun. Not to say that we didn't do dates during the dark times, but I we think really now that we no, we did. We did. Yeah, I guess they were. F- we literally went on a date. I think like maybe I just couldn't enjoy week. them. Exactly. I think that's what it was. <laughs> 
I think that's what it was because yeah. your brain was thinking about the, the kids. The babies. I mean, they are still. Th- my but brain wait. is still thinking about okay, the babies. Okay, on our date but... two nights ago, was your brain thinking about the babies the whole time? No. No. Wait, were... seriously? No, I knew they were asleep. Wait, welcome to my world. I, that's how I feel because I'm like, <laughs> I know in my head that my They're babies okay. are taken care They're of. They're taken care of. I know that your parents are good caretakers of our children when we're on a date, and so I wasn't worried that they were going to do anything that was going to put my children in danger. So I, I really, I no, my, that was, I was never mentally my fear. free. My fear before was that like. I don't know. I feel and, like you're not going to understand. And also, I would never have somebody watch my kid that I didn't trust. Like, I, I wouldn't. For sure. I, I, I want to make sure that people that are but taking care of my children are baby good Baby babies people. can be finicky even with their parents. So that's yeah. why it's like, that's why I feel like I would just want to be there when they're so little. Dude. And that's a biological thing. Maybe part of the reason that we go into the dark place after having kids is because I think women... It might be a biological thing. It where, is a biological where like, thing. But bi- biologically, your bent is to always think about your kids because then that ensures that they're being taken care of and that they're going to survive. And maybe it's more of like an evolutionary trait that's been For built sure. up over millions of Mothers years. Mothers are incredible. It, even like with animals, it makes me cry when I think, oh gosh, we said we weren't going to cry. I'm not going to cry. But when I see a mama bear get her cubs across the road safely. Exactly. Oh, I just relate to that mama bear. I'm just like, gotta get it across the road safely. Everyone cry? in the line. I'm not gonna cry. Are you gonna cry right like, now? Everyone get in line. Watch was, out for cars. I was looking at you, and I was about to cry too. I was looking at you at the Wonka movie two nights ago when he could see his mom. Stop! In the, don't in the crowd. You're trying now. When he sees his mom, he just wanted his mom to be there for his big moment. And yeah. we're we're those people for our little people. Yeah. And it's crazy. Have how, you seen the video? Wait, stop. Have it's you seen crazy the video? how I cry. I I'm more emotional now that I'm a father because like I can so relate to seeing a relationship of like a mother and her child. Like I I feel that with me and my kids. And. I can see now why my dad has gotten so emotional as an old man because he's had his boys and now he has grandkids and he loves his boys and his grandkids so much. And so you guys have broken him. I'm still not a very emotional person, but I'm way more emotional than I ever used to be. But have you seen that video of the little kid? He I think it was like a school performance of some sort and his parent is recording him. And he's looking, you can see him like looking all through the bleachers for his mom and dad or mom or dad. And he's looking and looking and looking. He starts to look kind of sad. And then he finds, his eyes meet the camera, which the person holding the camera is like his parent. Yeah. And he lights up. And uh, then he just kind of like continues on his way with like a little sm- like small smile trying uh, to play it cool. Like as he, the, it's so cute. And then the video where the grandma surprises the boy at his school lunch. It was That's so, cute. oh my gosh. It's just, I love that. And like, we are those like really important people in our kids' lives. And it's like, it's such an honor. Like, yeah, oh, I love them so much. And I'm so excited. I was the same way. But then I, I think when I got older, if my parents were recording me when I was like a teenager, then I got embarrassed because oh, I, because I didn't. And, and it, and looking back, I'm like, wow, it's so hearts, now looking back. I'm like, that's so sweet. My parents were supportive enough to be yes. there for me and root me on. And so like looking back now, I can appreciate that. And I, it makes me love them so much more just knowing yeah. how, how present and um, a part of my life they were. But as a teenager, like it's so embarrassing sometimes if you're like 17 and you're performing and then your mom's the one with like this, <laughs> this camcorder that's recording you. Me. Yeah. I don't know. That's so cute. Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like I feel like you will get more emotional, but do you think you will reach the point of emotion of your father? I don't think I'll ever get there like my dad, but I think I think I'm just more like my mom. I'm I, I get a lot of who I am from my mother. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, your dad Including my ADHD. I think my parents have ADHD. I, mean, <laughs> I think they do. And I think that they could I think they could be medicated and I think They're that I can be medicated. They're gonna listen to this and text you. They are. My parents listen to our podcast. I think you've told them this. Mom before, and dad, though. you should get evaluated for ADHD too. I'm gonna do it. I've been saying this for years and I haven't done it. 2024 is your year. 2024 is my year. I think it's probably hardest for people with ADHD to get diagnosed because they have to buckle down (laughs) and make an appointment. And that's what I can't do. Can you help me? Can you make my appointment for me? I think probably the most severe Wait, cases please, will go undiagnosed forever because can, they will have to make an appointment to see a doctor. Can you, can you make my ADHD appointment for me, please? I I, that's a you thing. If, if I have your permission, I will. Yes, of okay, course. I'll make your 
Thank you. I'm asking you to. That would be okay. That would be the best Christmas I'm gift get ever. You evaluated. It's kind of sad that we didn't get each other Christmas it gifts. It is sad. We are not but, gift people. But we also like to travel. We do experiences instead. And we do experience instant experiences instead. So and I think we're gonna go you know on another crazy? snowboarding trip here soon. So maybe that could be our Christmas gift to each here other. We are. Oh, in Utah. I think we're gonna go to Utah. Yeah. Okay. So I have been seeing before I deleted TikTok, which by the way, I feel like a new person for doing that, but I wow. shouldn't. It's completely off your phone. Oh, it's gone. You don't have TikTok at and all. And when I need to do minor things for our like occupation, I literally just grab your phone for a second. That's and I'm crazy. not scrolling. It's great, but I shouldn't probably advertise that because we, that we're is TikTokers. Our, <laughs> <laughs> that's our job. But I will say now we're podcasters as now. Is your that crazy? friend delete TikTok in 2024, you will feel a million times <laughs> but better. But listen to our podcast. And yeah, you can listen, even listen podcasts to it. Are healthy. Actually, great. you can listen to our podcast on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts. I think there's even like an Amazon podcast platform, which is nice. And you can just you can have us in the background while you're like doing laundry or, or cooking dinner or something or just driving to work. You can do that. Mm-hmm. If you're I, if you're someone that watches our podcast all the time, try listening to it instead and see how you like it more. See if you like the the feeling of just having us in your ear while you're um, folding clothes, or if you want to watch us and put us on the TV, that's cool too because it feels like we're in the same room. Yeah. But I challenge you. Oh gosh. To listen to it, I can elaborate more on that decision later if that's something. But I don't really think. I really care. respect that. Um, I, we but, put limits on our phones. I have a 20 minute limit for TikTok and Instagram combined. So I can only use Instagram and TikTok 20 minutes a day. Yeah. So I, I just use that to really post. So I kind of feel bad. Like when mm-hmm. I see friends comment and stuff on my posts, I feel bad because I don't post. Like you I don't, don't really comment. Time. I don't comment back on their stuff, but it's been way better for my mental health to for sure. use less social yeah. media. Before I deleted TikTok though, I would see these TikToks at Christmas time of their Christmas hauls and People were like adding up. Now, I don't know how accurate they were, but they would add up like the total spent on this person on their like Christmas haul. And they're oh in the gosh. thousands every oh time. My gosh. And that's just never been us or our families. Like uh, we have, we do gift exchanges and they're very, very thoughtful gifts. But I don't think if you were to add up the total, you would even get to $500 because... And that even that is a lot of money. But what I'm saying in comparison is like people were getting gifts that were one single gift was over five hundred dollars. And we've just never been like that. That's like crazy to me. Yeah, we've just never been people like that. Wow. So um yeah, it is maybe one year we should do a gift exchange though with me and you. But I do also like that we just exchange like experiences, like trips, and that alone is more than five hundred dollars. Honestly, no trips are more than five hundred dollars. But it's just not a formal like this is our Christmas gift to each other. I've thought about this though. I thought it'd be a fun series to do on YouTube, seeing how cheaply we can travel. So we used to do that in college. Yeah. Because we had literally no money we to spend our on pot. travel. Uh, yeah, so we'd like bring stuff with us to cook and we'd stay in like the cheapest Airbnb we possibly could find and then we'd buy food at the grocery store and cook and just do like a road trip. So we ended up being able to do like a, a whole vacation for like under 300 bucks. So I think that's like pretty impressive. I think it'd be fun to do that. Maybe we could go camping. We could, that could, because camping is no, free. No, 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 What if no, we went no, camping no, and we no, cooked no, all no, of our own no, food? No, 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 I'm not that girl. And we can see how cheaply we can do a trip. I'm not that girl. <laughs> what if, okay, what if we find the cheapest hotel or the cheapest Airbnb okay. and then spent the night there? But then would that scare you though if we had like bed bugs in our bed? Yeah, I got bed bugs that before happened, and it that, wasn't We pleasant. once had that happen to us and it was scary. Good old Los Angeles. This portion of today's episode is brought to you by Daily Harvest. So we got our Daily Harvest shipment in the other day and I caught Abby just feeding Griffin all this food. We were food. sharing. It was hilarious. You made him a smoothie. It came in this like really cute box and then Delicious Griffin, smoothie. he drank that smoothie so fast. He, he loved loves it. He loves their smoothies. Yes. And I do too. And also they had like, we also had their pasta. I just thought it was funny, like the second you got the food pasta. in the mail, you're like, I'm going to feed my son this daily harvest. We shared them. He deserves it. He does. He deserves only the best. And you guys, if you don't know what daily harvest is, it makes it easy to meet any kind of goals you have for the new year when it comes to diet and stick with them because they take the planning, prep, and cleanup out of cooking by delivering your favorite veggies and fruit packed meals straight to your door. So like Matt said, we had a smoothie. I think it was like a strawberry banana one. They have soups. They have pastas. They have all kinds of good healthy bowls. And it's so nice because you literally do zero prep work. You throw it in the microwave or blend it in the blender. Feed it to your toddler. It's just so convenient. (laughs) It's 
so easy. And actually, one of my resolutions this year, I hate diets. I hate thinking of like restricting anything. I love food and flavor so much. And one of my New Year's resolutions, though, was just to come up with quick and healthy lunch items. And Daily Harvest does just that for you, right to your door. Um, They have plant-based options built on organic fruits and vegetables that are easy to prep and free of gluten, fillers, seed oils, added starches and sugars. It really takes the guesswork and effort out of eating food that I know is good for me. Yeah. So it's great. It's great. (laughs) Yeah. They have a butternut squash and rosemary soup. Here's what's great about Daily Harvest, too. If you're a bigger eater like me, Mm -hmm. it creates a great base and option for you that you can just add extra protein to or add you know it's really just protein that i would just add to it and there's so many different options and varieties of foods that you can get um our freezer is full of it right now and it's just it's cool all the different soups and smoothies and yeah meals that are just ready to be made ready to eat yeah and a common criticism with products like this is the waste and daily harvest is actually doing their part to take care of our earth because they use only recyclable or compostable packing when possible so say yes to healthy habits without the hassle with daily harvest go to dailyharvest.com unplanned to get up to 65 dollars off your first box plus free shipping for a limited time only that's dailyharvest.com unplanned for up to 65 dollars off your first box and free shipping dailyharvest.com com slash unplanned thank you and now back to the episode so abby we <sighs> talked about this a little bit but what would you say is your main new year's resolution for 2024 what do you think it is so yours are to start a coffee shop to read more books less social media less, read more books less social media and that's I don't in know the if, same one. That's this, one bullet point. Was this one of my, like this is one of mine, but I don't know if it was one of yours too. But to build more community. Yeah, mine. My, I've literally memorized mine. It's make and keep good friendships. Okay. Because we still have, we have good friends, but we yeah. just need to maintain those relationships and make more friends. Yeah. Um, another one I have is volunteer more. I want to be like an active contributing member of our community, and. Um, I think we can make every excuse in the book like oh we have little babies oh i was pregnant you gotta start even when it's hard you gotta just start and maybe it won't look like as involved as you can be down the line but you just have to get in the habit now of serving and just being involved intimately in people's lives that are just all different walks of life and i feel like we just need to diversify more like the people that we're surrounding ourselves with and um we haven't been doing a good job of that I I feel like we need to just yeah I do put want to volunteer. There. We volunteered once last year, and I don't know if we volunteered again. Like after that's that. pathetic. Honestly, we need to we need to volunteer more than <laughs> so once that's, a year. So that's that's definitely a big one. Another one is budgeting. Um, yeah, I think that it's really powerful to know like where your money's going out, and I want to get a better grip on that. Um, what's another? I think another that one is wear cute jammies. That could be something that we do together because I think in the past. I've done more of the budget side of things, but we've never done it as a team. And I think it'll be really powerful if we do our budget together as a team. Mm-hmm. So let's do it. I think it'll be yeah. fun. Shake wear my hand. cute jammies is what was why, my next. Why is one? wear cute jammies one of your because New Year's I resolutions? Because I just think that I um, want to do that. Because like, especially when I was pregnant and postpartum, I was just wearing random T-shirts, and it just oh, yeah. wasn't. I just want to be cute. Okay, are, I just want to be cute. You are really cute. Um, next one, thank you. Next one was uh, kiss more. Kiss more. I feel like we had babies and we stopped smooching. Why as are we? Much. I feel like we're not kissing more already. I'm talking should, about. I'm not talking about like making out. You just know, kissing. I'm talking about just like kiss me, just throughout the day. I'm gonna kiss yeah. you throughout the day. We gotta do that more. I feel yeah. like we do it, but we need to do it more. Totally. Um, let's think. Check it out my list. I think I've exhausted all the ones I can think of off the top of my head. The number one New Year's resolution on my list too is to build community. And I think, I think I'm happiest when I'm with people and when, when I'm hanging out with friends and there's no price that you can put on that. And the funny thing about community is it's free. Like there's no, there's no dollar amount to having a friend there's it's not like something you have to pay for it's just it's free to be with your friends it's free Mm -hmm. to hang out and i think sometimes i get so focused on like business and all those things where my brain can't just realize like wait a second 
I need to be intentional with my friends. I need to be reaching out to people and inviting people to hang out because I think we've both fallen into, fallen into this trap where we expect other people to reach out to us and invite us to things. Oh, for sure. And then we feel like, wait, why am I not hanging out with people? Why am I not with friends? It's, it's like, like, you're not reaching out. Exactly. So to build community this year, I'm going to be a lot more intentional with reaching out to people, scheduling hangouts, putting things on the calendar because that's what you have to do as a parent to make yeah. sure that the hangout actually happens. Um, but community building is my number one Very good New point. Year's resolution for 2024. And I'll I'm already doing that. I'm already doing it this year. Great. Yeah. Um, I also want to have one like asterisk revision on the volunteer one. Yeah. I, my, my goal was volunteer regularly. Uh, and I think that actually makes a difference because I don't want to just volunteer here and there. I think that's good maybe at the beginning to find, but I want to become like deeply involved with just a handful of organizations because I think that's where you can have a greater impact. If you keep showing up and seeing the same people and yeah, yeah I don't know. I think there's something to that. Um, start a book club was one of mine, but then I actually started to think about it. I'm like, am I going to prepare questions? Yeah. Mostly, I just want to have like a community outlet, but yeah. and I want to have assigned readings again. I don't know why. Yeah. So I'm going to start a book club. I think mostly we're just going to talk about life and things. Yeah. Um, I don't want to be in charge of it, though, is the thing. I mostly want to join a book club. There's literally women in our neighborhood that told yeah, you you can join theirs. Yeah, they just drink wine. They don't... Oh, they drink wine? And most of them don't do the reading. That's one of mine, is I... I'm doing dry January right now. So I have, I've seen article after article the past couple of months about how any amount of alcohol is bad for you. And it scared me, because mm. I'm not a drinker. I don't, I don't drink very often. I probably have, on average, a drink, maybe two drinks a week. Um, but more though, more now than ever, I've been drinking alcohol. I used to like not even drink, I would drink maybe an alcoholic beverage a month. So I've just realized I don't want this to become more of a habit. I want to nip this in the bud. And so I decided I'm doing dry January. I'm not drinking at all for I'm the month doing of January. Wet January. Abby has started to drink <laughs> in January. <laughs> On our date the other night, I, I, I was- I got a you got a sangria. No, How was that? It was, How, was great. That fun? I think that because I haven't drank for like two years straight. Yeah. It's fun. And I, my limit is literally one drink. I'm not going to yeah. do more than one drink. But one drink, a, like m- maximum. And I think that means I am pretty much doing one or two drinks a week. That's yeah. really fun. Yes. Um, um, with me. I think I think that's hilarious that you're doing a wet <laughs> January. I mean, I haven't purchased really any except for when we went out on our date. Yeah. But, um, and, and I started not drinking on Christmas Day. But then when we were with Abby's family and it was New Year's, uh, I ended up having a beverage on New Year's, which now I'm kind of like, dang it, because I, I had a streak going and I, and I broke the streak. But then starting New Year's Day or wait, that was New Year's, New Year's Eve. Eve, I had a drink. You New had Year's to get Day. one last out of your system. Yeah, New Year's Day, I didn't. So I'm going to do the month of January. I'm considering maybe doing it the whole year. Um, I think something that would probably be even better for my health if, if I, is if I gave up sweets and like sugar completely. Oh, but that's, stop that. But that, that would be really hard. I just, I love dessert so much. Yeah, we can't do that. I don't think I could do it. Okay. Um, my last one was find quick and healthy lunch options. Nice. I feel like our lunch game is weak. Yeah. And I think that's an area of improvement that I want to work on. Oh, I forgot my other one. Get rid of stuff. I just oh. want to get rid of everything i just don't like stuff yeah. it keeps you it ties you down it just gives you more jobs because then when you have more stuff then you have more you have to clean more stuff it's like no yeah. i don't want it get it out so i'm gonna do a detox of our house yeah one of one of mine on my list is to dive deeper into making music which i actually have a new song called um i literally forgot the name of, of my song oh. called give me your worst and I feel like, Aww, and I feel like, I love that. Do you like I that just, name? You never told me the name. Do you think you know what the song's about based off of the name? I don't know. Just like, give me your worst and you're still going to love me. Yeah. That's basically <gasps> the, yeah, I wrote it for you and it's a wedding song. It's a first dance song. Wait, that's so um, sweet. I'm literally hearing about this for the first time. Yeah. Uh, and it's actually completely done. It's ready. And by the time this podcast is out, the song will be out. What are you releasing it? I think I'm going to release it like a week from today from the day that we're recording this but this wow. this episode will be out after i release the song so um check it out i like this one a lot because it is unique and that i haven't heard a wedding song like it um it's so different from like the cutesy sweet wedding songs that you hear and it's more about like 
I'm signing up for your worst, so give me your worst. That's and, so, I love that concept. Yeah, um, and it's just kind of a complete spin on this idea of like the wedding day being like, it's like all perfect and you're gonna have this perfect life together. And it's like, actually the flip side of the perfect life together is like d- doing life is really hard. And with with marriage and a relationship comes challenges and I'm okay with that and I'm committing to that. And so- mm. um, just I kind feel of, like that's almost- <laughs> kind of counter counter cultural in a way because yeah i feel like nowadays everyone just wants like as soon as it gets hard they want to back out yeah and i feel like that's really what people need to hear nowadays yeah so that's really cool and i'm sure people will interpret the song like they might find like a cutesy way which it is a cute song it has like a a sweet melody to it um i like the the melody gets stuck in your head because i it's but truthfully i I I feel like that's what love is though yeah like love perseveres through hard times like yeah true love deep love yeah and i think infatuation is would yeah. never you know yeah and what's funny about the there's song, so many wedding songs about infatuation sorry what's funny about the song too is it's kind of like it throws a curveball in there so it starts off all like positive and talking about the good things and it's like i like the way that you laugh when we're dancing under the stars it's like all these all these sweet cutesy things and then it just like it throw it's like a reverse uno card and it goes into all the things that i want that are like quote unquote bad because i love you that much and i want to take on that you i'm excited to hear yeah i really want to give this like side project of music more of my focus and uh maybe i'll even do a live show in 2024 i think that'd that'd be be really really fun i'd be crapping my pants on stage because i haven't been on stage in a very long time (laughs) to perform but I do love doing that though. So I think it'd be pretty fun to do. You're good at making yourself uncomfortable. Thanks. That's kind of how I am. Like when something scares me, I want to do it to make myself stronger. For sure. You know? I don't like that. You do, which is admirable. And that's why I literally get anxiety when I read books aloud. Because in school, I was the first person to raise my hand when they wanted someone to read the book out loud in class. Because I, it would make me scared. And I was like, okay, I need to make myself do it to make myself stronger. And so now when I read aloud, even to, even to you, I just like spit on that pillow. That was kind of gross. But even when I read aloud <laughs> to you, sometimes I'll get nervous because it like brings back um, me forcing myself to read in class. That is a very interesting thing that really you made weird. yourself do as a yeah. kid. Yeah. And what's, what I envy about you, Abby, is throughout your whole like acting career, not that you did it professionally, but like i mean but like your whole time acting as a kid you never would get nervous from what i'm from what i understand like you just had the most confidence with like no i got nervous oh you did i got nervous with singing oh but like acting you wouldn't get nervous right not really like and see i i envy that because i i would get like really scared i would get like really in my head i don't remember getting scared i'm sure i had butterflies yeah Mm. and i still get that way too even being on camera making youtube videos sometimes i I get really in my head and i get very nervous to record because i'm aware of the fact that thousands potentially millions of people will see this video and so then i just get all flustered but so but i think it's so cool how you aren't like that at all well i just think that's probably interesting for people to hear because i think that (laughs) it's it's hard to understand like yeah what that could be like for you like you're always expected to say the exact right thing in the exact yeah. right way and editing also does a lot for changing the narrative and yeah. that's just a lot of pressure on you and people don't people don't realize that not that you're looking for pity but people don't realize yeah. like we don't we don't have um publicists we don't have no other eyes like working on this it's really a small operation here it's just us filtering it and that's yeah that's a pretty unattainable standard (laughs) yeah which i do love this podcast though because it's nice that we can just have a conversation and and it'll still get misinterpreted but that's all right and and, (laughs) and it it sucks too because like with the clips like we we post shorts of the podcast that it gets the word out and gets people excited about the new episodes but those will get misinterpreted and there's people that watch those that never watch our actual podcast and and, there's people that are just bound to disagree with us yeah anyway and and that's that's totally fine that's okay but um, if it's not for you then um you're in charge of your own destiny you don't have to watch it yeah that's good but um, <laughs> we're not 
there before how did, everyone how did we get on that oh, i don't know oh but yeah back we to the podcast probably. thing i love that we can just like have a conversation and i don't have to worry about like setting up the camera to get the right angle for the shot if we're doing a vlog because sometimes it's like very stressful when i'm um mm -hmm. vlogging but yeah i don't know so i if i love how chill you are i think you're a very chill that's gal. very nice of you yeah i didn't think that you would all honestly call me chill except the more you've said it recently i'm like wow that's that feels good to hear that yeah um i like you you're my best friend you're my best friend you're a really sweet girl i love you i had so much fun on our dinner and movie date two nights ago and i want to do that like we need every night can we do i, I literally wanted to, like we woke up the next morning and i was like i don't want to work right now i just want to spend time with you and then you and then you were like no like i i have stuff to do right now i have to, and when I, which is, uh, which right. is fine <laughs> which is fine like i totally get that but i'm like all or nothing like i'm either yeah. like all in on just like let's have fun and go on dates or i'm like okay i have to i'm i'm in grind mode right now i have to work all this so i i like i like you you're very good you're tapping my ankle because i think we probably need to wrap up yeah, the we podcast do. i just wanted to say that if the unplanned podcast is a podcast you've decided to listen to in year 2024 we are very honored because it's a good chunk of your time yeah and um we appreciate you and um yeah, you guys really know a lot about us. And We've, so yeah. it's really cool meeting you guys in person because I feel like we're automatically like there's a certain level of friendship almost there because we know each other. Well, you know us. We've almost done this for a whole year. Can you believe that? That is wild. A whole year. 52 hours. That's a little bit too much. Yeah. If you've watched every single episode, drop a comment down below. Um, we would love to see you guys and say hi to you and... Um, we appreciate you guys like listening and being a part of this. So we're excited for this new year and we'll have to bring some cool changes to the podcast this year. I'm excited for what we're going to, what we're going to do and what 2024 has to offer. I think you're going to really like what's going to happen. Yeah. Very excited. We love you guys. And until next time. Three, two, one. Peace, Peace out, out dudes. dudes.